hi guys welcome to my channel this is the great tech basically in this channel we discuss about tech related videos i and my team come up with educative videos that will help to develop your repair skill so if you're coming across this channel for the first time please subscribe to our channel and at the end of this video if this video is helpful you can give us a like and also if you have any question comment below and i promise i will reply to your question so without wasting much of your time let's dive straight into the video of today In today's video, we'll be talking about short circuit. So basically, we have two types of short circuit. We have the full shot and the partial shot. So in today's video, we are um, deliberating on um, what we call the full shot. Okay. So um, the full shot is um, when the multimeter is showing zero 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 resistance. When it's showing zero resistance on the multimeter, that is what we call a full shot. And full shots are mostly caused by capacitors and sometimes diode why partial shots are do cause they do they are caused by the um the ic and sometimes the diode can cause a partial shot also so in today's video um this mobile device on our front i'll be using it as to perform the experiment the mobile device um is not coming on and it drains battery that is what the customer complained that once you put in battery it will drain it so this battery now let me read the initial voltage of this battery okay let me set it at um 20 direct current voltage that is for the multimeter so if you have not been watching my video on multimeter basic you can go back and check my previous video you learn how to use the multimeter so after setting our multimeter at the 20 20 dcv that is 20 direct current voltage now let's read it put your black probe at the negative side and the positive at the positive side the initial voltage was 3.70 so the battery is charged please note the initial voltage 3.70 so now let's try putting it on the mobile device okay so now what happened there i'm experiencing heat on the logic board it's very heating up so the mobile device is heating up let me try turning it on so i try switching it on the phone refused to switch on so i experienced that the battery is getting hot and the mobile device pcb board that the logic board is getting hot also so as you can see the battery i experienced that the battery is getting hot so now let me um check the battery voltage now to see initially it was it was at 3.7 so let me um check it um it's giving a minus okay i'm putting the probe um opposite way let me put it where um put the red at the positive and the black at the negative okay at the negative terminal now the voltage is um 3.52 so as you can see the voltage has dropped from 3.7 to 3.52 and if you should leave that battery for some time it will drain off completely so let's troubleshoot this motherboard first of all set your um your multimeter dial at the continuity mode so that mode is the continuity mode or we can call it the diode mode always set your multimeter at the continuity mode whenever you want to troubleshoot the motherboard so next we are going to be troubleshooting to know the faults the problem the component that is having issue on this logic board so the first thing you do as an engineer when troubleshooting faults like this is you read the battery terminal so after setting your multimeter at the continuity mode the first thing you do you to see if the multimeter is working shut the two probe and you notice a red light and a sound a beep sound from the multimeter that is to show that you are shutting the probe so now let's read the battery terminal to see as you can see it's still giving us shots and the resistance or the reading on the multimeter is zero 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 that indicates that the battery terminal is giving us a full shot a full shot let me zoom it up a little bit for you to see as you can see from the reading it's still giving us full shot the reason is zero 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 so now we'll be troubleshooting the motherboard to know where the fault is from okay so now we'll be looking for the component that is faulty that is used making the mobile device to experience full shot okay so now this capacitor here sometimes there's a capacitor that used to be here like i3260 most um keypad device their capacitor do used to be located here also so we'll be testing this capacitor here to know if is the one that is faulty 
okay because a capacitor is not supposed to give us a full shot a capacitor is not supposed to give us short circuit it's not supposed to be short circuited so let's check if this capacitor is giving us short so as you can see that capacitor is giving us a full shot and the battery terminal also is giving us full shots which is the mobile device is 40 a one of these capacitor must be the one that is faulty so let's check let's replace remove these two capacitor and we'll test the, the battery terminal again to see if they're still short so let's try removing these two capacitor okay because the both of them are short so let's try removing this first one now get your blower that is your rework station apply paste on the on the capacitor and heat it gently hit it carefully make sure you don't remove other components close to it like the resistor carefully heat okay now the capacitor is out now let's hit the, the other the tiny capacitor okay the other one is out also so now let's try reading the um the battery terminal to see if the shot is still there so as you can see from the multimeter reading the shot is still there it's still beeping and it's still showing the red light so the shot is still there so now let's check the capacitor if it shots circuited so the capacitor is not short circuited that is to say the capacitor is good is working so let's try checking the smaller one also to see if it's short circuited as you can see there's no reading on the multimeter is not short circuited the capacitor is good so now we'll be looking further to see if we can look for a component either the capacitor or the ic or the diode that is short circuited so now we'll be opening this main processor area this is where the cpu is found and the power ic is found so if there's any faults you do not locate it close to the battery terminal the next place you'll be looking at is this place so let's take out this lining that is covering it okay now you, the next thing you get your this is your pcb holder this is your pcb holder we're using it to hold our pcb family while performing this operation so now get the pcb holder align the pcb that is the logic board the printer circuit board on the um, pcb holder that is you can call it call it panel holder or logic board or anything you want to call it but it's used to hold the pcb that is the printer circuit board so once you have successfully aligned the printer circuit board on the um the pcb holder now you need to apply your heat evenly don't apply it one single plate apply it evenly like around the edges of this um the steel that is the stainless steel that is covering the serving as protection that is covering the processor and the um other ic like the power ic and the rest so now once you have successfully removed it okay now let's let me zoom it a little bit now you observe carefully there are two ways to know if a capacitor is faulty you can use your physical examination to check if it's faulty and you can use your multimeter to know okay so now get the red positive probe should be placed at the ground now you'll be using the black probe to look for the shot okay so this is our ic so let's try checking the capacitor that is 40 close to the cpu okay let's try checking so this one is short and this the other side is not short this side is short the other side is not short this side is short this side is short this capacitor is a suspect but the both side is short it's not supposed to be so another easiest way you can troubleshoot and know if a capacitor is faulty or is bad is by physically examining it either using a magnifying glass or a microscope or with your eyes okay so this capacitor right here looks faulty because it looks like something that is burnt is black so let's try reading it a bit as if you can observe very well this side is short and the other side is also short the other side is short on the multimeter you can observe the multimeter the other one also is short circuited so let's try replacing this capacitor to know if the shorts will still be there so it's still short circuited so now let me try removing this capacitor that is giving us full shot on the multimeter so those two capacitors are giving us full shot including the one that is there and note if one capacitor is giving us a shot it will give it will make the motherboard not to work it may affect other capacitors like it may a capacitor that is working perfectly it may 
um, make it it will be looking as if it's giving us short why is not so it's just like as if you are bridging you are joining two life wire together okay it will affect the rest of the circuit so i've successfully removed the first capacitor let me try removing the second one okay that is the tiny one okay so i've successfully removed the both of the capacitors so now i'm going to be using my multimeter to check each and every one of those capacitors to know the one that is giving us full shots okay so but before we do that we'll check let's bring it out let's bring it out okay now this is the capacitor and this is the let's bring the second one out the shiny one okay so now once that is out now i'm going to use the multimeter to read the capacitor to know that the one that is faulty so once i join it together i notice on the multimeter is giving us a full shot that this capacitor right here is faulty it's not supposed to give us a full shot okay this capacitor right here is faulty is the the only component that gives full shot is the resistor okay the resistor gives shots some of them give full shots some of them give partial shots okay but the capacitor don't give full shots notes capacitors don't give full shots so the smaller one we are testing it now is working perfectly it's not giving us shots the smaller capacitor is working so i'm going to be replacing that particular capacitor i'm getting it from a scrap board a condemned board that is 40 40 pcb board i'm going to get the capacitor from there so carefully hit the capacitor out and let's replace it let's replace it from the location and once when you are replacing an ic or removing make sure you or a capacitor or a component close to an ic make sure you protect the ic the other ic that you are not working on you can protect it by covering it so that it will not affect it so after doing that after covering those ic with that stainless now let me try replacing the capacitor okay let me try replacing it after, let me hit it carefully hit it carefully make sure you don't remove other components close to it so once you have successfully mounted the capacitor on the logic board next we are going to be replacing these two capacitors that we removed from here you remember those capacitors are okay but uh, i misplaced them so i'm going to be getting them from a logic board also to replace it okay let me get one of them uh, after hitting it out then let me mount it okay make sure you note the position where you remove each and every component okay so once i've mounted that one let me look for the tiny capacitor okay remember we remove another capacitor there so carefully hit it then the mounting has been done we have mounted the two capacitors that is the four capacitors we remove initially from the board now let's read the battery terminal to see if there is still short okay let's read it and let me zoom it a little bit and okay as you can see from the multimeter there's nothing like short there's nothing like short let me turn it the other way around to see if it will give me a reading okay as you can see it's giving me a reading not a full shot it's giving me a reading that is now the logic board is working but now let's test it with a uh, battery now first of all remove the logic board from the pcb holder now let's use our battery to test it once I started my battery, I try switching it on again, and boom, the mobile phone comes on. Okay, it comes on. As you can see, is on. So this work now has been successfully done. The fault that is making this mobile device to um to be not to come on, uh, to give you full shot, is the capacitor. Okay, so as you can see now, we successfully replace the capacitor. Is only one capacitor. Only one capacitor that is uh, that is faulty can affect the whole board. You understand? Only this capacitor that is here, yeah, this main capacitor, that one that we replace, that is the what it has been making the mod motherboard to be misbehaving. Okay, so that capacitor has been successfully replaced. Now the logic board is working perfectly fine. Now the next thing we are going to be mounting this stainless steel back to the logic board. So after you have successfully aligned make sure you align it very well then bring the logic board and place it carefully to the pcb holder okay once you are done you screw screw the pcb holder so that it will hold the the logic board firmly now once that is done the next thing you get your workstation and apply heat on 
the stainless steel evenly don't hit one place make sure the heat go around the edges okay so, so basically guys this is the easiest way to detect a shot and troubleshoot a shot look for a 40 component on the logic board most component that do cause full shot is the diode and the capacitor so once we have successfully removed those components the logic board will start working so this is basically the easiest way you can use to troubleshoot a short circuit on any logic board be it a keypad board an iphone board or an android board okay for full shot or you can call it complete short circuit so thank you for watching this is the great phone repairs please subscribe to my youtube channel for online classes and mentorship you can contact me on the number showing on your screen please don't forget to share this video in order to help and assist other engineers all around the world and also if this video is helpful let me know on the comment below and also like the video if it's helpful